Y'all ever heard that joke about the guy? You heard that? Y'all never heard that? Guy's out in the pasture with his wife. Truck breaks down. He pops the hood. He's got his head underneath the hood. There's an old mule in the pasture. He's all bent up underneath the hood. That mule comes up, rams him in the rump, runs his head right into the hood of the truck. He turned around, looked at that mule, and said, that's one. He got back up underneath there and started working. That old mule come up to him. This time he hit him a little harder, smacked his head up against the hood. He jumped down off the hood, and he said, mule, that's two. He climbed back up there, and he was working away. That old mule just got back and reared him this time and run his head right into the hood of that truck. He jumped down, said, that's three. Went to his truck, reached behind the seat of the truck, pulled out his rifle and shot the mule right between the eyes. Put the rifle back behind the seat, got back up on the hood of the car. His wife wanted to get his attention. She blew the horn. He jumped up and banged his head. He looked around the corner and said, that's one. A few years back, there was an Olympic runner by the name of Bernard Lager. Lager. He was so favored to win the 500 meter and the 1500 meter, everybody knew it was a lock. It was done. He was favored. He was the best in the race. He was going to win. You know, he didn't even place in either one of those events. He was on the verge of victory, and yet he failed. Everything was going for him, and he failed. And I've already approved this next part with my wife. Yesterday, we were at a roping. We made it all the way to the short go. All we had to do is catch to win a check. We were on the verge of victory, and we failed. My wife was so mad on the way home, and I looked over at her and said, do you want to quit roping? And she just snapped her head around and said, absolutely not. I ain't giving up now. Folks, as a church, we're on the verge of victory with this new building. We can't give up now. This is when the times are going to get tough. It's getting close. Things are getting done. It's getting down to the nitty and the gritty. You know, you can put a bunch of two-by-fours together real quick and frame up some walls. But it's the finishing that takes the time. You can ask Jeff. He's a plumber. It's easy to lay a bunch of pipe. You can run pipe for 500 yards, but when it goes inside the house and finishing out and putting all the toilets and the sinks in and the tubs in, that's when it gets done. Then you got to come along and trim that stuff in. That's when it gets done. And that's where we're at now. And it gets difficult because we're right there. We're so close. We're on the verge of the victory, and I don't want anybody in this church to get discouraged or anything, you know, because we're there and it's not going to be this Sunday. And, you know, there's a good possibility if the good Lord throws three inches of rain at us next week, it won't be Easter Sunday either. But I don't know his plan. But I know this. He didn't build that building out there for us to fail. He didn't build that building out there for us to fall short of the victory that he has planned for us. He built that victory for us, that building out there for us to go on to victory. The writer of Hebrews said it best in chapter 12. If you brought your Bibles with you today, that's where we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to talk about being on the verge of victory. We're on the great verge of victory for Jesus. Do you know what verge means? I looked this up this morning. On the edge, on the brink, and this is the one that fits us, a transitional state. Is that not perfect? Are we not in a transitional state? We're on the verge of victory. We're getting ready to transform to the next step, to the next level that God wants us to go to. And here's where it's going to get tough for us as a church. You're going to walk over there today, and you're going to walk in that building, and some of you people are going to say, well, why did they do it this way? They should have done it that way. Why didn't they put the light over here? Why didn't they put the light over there? And I'm saying to you, does it matter? You know, there's things in that building that I wouldn't have done. There's things in that building that wouldn't have been done the way that I'd have done it. But you know what? I walk in that building with tears in my eyes. It's so beautiful. It just blows me away what God has done. And you know what I've come to believe? Sometimes, anyway. God's ways is a lot better than my ways. 
that God's plan is a lot more secure than my plan, that God's end result finishes out so much better than mine does. You know, believe me, I've tried a lot of things in my life my way. And if you've got a few days, I'll tell you about how south they went. But the writer of Hebrews says in, in chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, we also, since surrounded by a great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. If we're going to keep from being discouraged, if we're going to keep from getting knocked back, if we're going to keep from this turning around, we've got to really pay attention to that first verse. We've got to lose some weight, guys. How many of y'all want to lose some weight? I do. I'm about 10 pounds from where I want to be. I've lost 10. I want to go 10 more. Ronnie tells me he don't have to wear his safety glasses anymore since I lost it at 10. He was always worried a button was going to come off and smack him in the eye. But we need to lose some weight. And one of the things it says here that we have to remember, you know, it says in verse 1, Therefore, since we're surrounded by a great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight. Let us get rid of this weight and let us remember back on what we've had before that we got a race before us. This race isn't done. You know, when this building's done and the parking lot's done and the AC's done and the water's done and the septic's done and it's all pretty and there's a great new sign out front, we ain't done. When the arena's done and all the trailer parking's done and all the land's cleared and all the fences are done and everything's connected up together and we got cows running out there, we ain't done. We went, that building wasn't up maybe about two and a half weeks, and I was standing there, and I forget who was with me. And I had the side doors open. I was looking out there, and they said, what you looking at, preacher? I said, I'm looking at our future building. I envision a new sanctuary being set right there, and this building here being a fellowship hall. A sanctuary that will set 500 classrooms and all in it. And they're like, daggum, preacher, we ain't even got this one done. I said, but we ain't going to be done. See, God's work, you're never done. You know why? Because there's always lost people. There's always sinners. There's always people like us that we need to reach. So we're not going to be done. There's not going to become a time, I've said this before, there's no retirement plan in God's deal. Retirement is heaven. The Bible says you store up your crowns of righteousness in heaven. I lay hold for these things for me which are in heaven. These things I do here are for in heaven, not for here. Folks, there's a lot of work that's going to be left to be done, and we're going to have to endure we're going to have to endure the weather and three-inch rain. And we're going to have to endure things not getting done when we think they should get done. And we're going to have to endure maybe things weren't done the way we thought that they should have been done. But we have to see God's plan. We have to see what's going on. We have to lose that weight. If not, what's, what's the Bible say there at the end of that verse? The sin which easily ensnares us. Because I can tell you what, we could take these next few weeks and the devil can turn that inward and, and just destroy everything God's done in the last year and a half. It's easy to be ensnared by sin. It's easy to be caught up in it. It's easy to be flushed out. It's easy for the devil to work against us when we feel disappointed. When we feel we're right there on the verge and we failed. Folks, we haven't failed anything. We just got to lose some weight, the Bible says. And when we do, we have to focus on the winner because the devil's going to try to use every little thing he can. You know why? Because if it's up to him, he never wants to see the doors open to that church. He never wants to see water running at baptismal. He never wants to see a soul saved. He never wants to see a youth come to know Jesus in that building. So believe me, the closer this gets done, the harder he's going to work. You know, when we were sitting here talking about a building... It wasn't that big of a problem for him. Then we went and bought a piece of land. He said, all right, it'd take him years to get a building. Well, folks, we've only owned that land. March was one year, right? Then we closed on the land in March. So we're like one year and a couple weeks. Not only do we have plans for a building, there's a building sitting on the property. 
Not only is that building sitting on the property, the walls are up inside. The rooms are done. The switches are there. The lights are in. The air conditioners are getting ready to be installed. Verse 2 says, we need to look unto Jesus, who's the author for our, of our faith, who with joy that was set before him endured the cross. The Bible says that Jesus went through such a tough job that he endured all the, all the, all the shame and all the stuff, but he, he went with joy to the cross. Doesn't make kind of sense, does it? Last night, I don't know if any of y'all get uh, some of the Christian channels, the Passion was on. How many of y'all seen the Passion? I'm going to tell you what. The last thing I seen in the end of that movie was any joy. When they took a Savior and they tied him to a pole and they ripped his skin from his body, it wasn't any joy. But Jesus did that with joy, the Bible says. I'm going to tell you what, there is nothing going to happen to us in the next few weeks that's going to be anything like that. We start getting ensnared in sin. We start getting to want to, to uh, feel defeated, feel depressed. Think about our Savior went to that cross, the Bible says, with joy. He endured everything he'd being spit on, being tr st they're trying to stone him, trying to kill him, trying to hunt him down. He endured all that, and the Bible says, with joy. Surely there's nothing that we can endure here on earth. There can't be anything like that. If you've seen that movie, I mean, it, it, I can't watch it. That part where they actually just continually to rip the flesh from him, make him carry a cross up the hill, lay the cross on the ground, and nail him to the cross. And the Bible says, that second verse says, with joy. It says, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher for our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, the joy of what was coming. Folks, there's a lot of joy going to happen in that building. There's going to be a lot of great times in that building. But it's so easy to feel like, oh, man, we were this close. This close is a lot better than this close. Better than this close. Better than this close. How much closer are we than a week ago? A month ago? Six months ago? See, Satan wants you to look at what you don't have. I'm telling you, whenever you start to get frustrated, drive by and look inside that building. And look at what we do have. Folks, we can apply this to our lives. We need to not feel defeated. You know, I, I, I looked at my wife's face when, I mean, her head snapped around like that. Do you want to stop her open? No. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm going to conquer this thing. I'm going on to victory. I'm going to run the race with endurance. I'm going to finish it to the end. I'm going to learn how to do this and get this down. We're going to do this. And it would have been awful easy to sit there because I'm going to tell you what, last month when we was coming down there and I'd made it to the short go and I missed, I didn't have that attitude. <laughs> uh, I was more, boy, do I really stink. Been doing this too long to stink this bad. But see, that's where that sin ensnares us. See, because we come to, remember we talk about life is all about choices, and we get to choose. Right now as a church, we get to choose. We can still, the Tepsis Baptist men are gone. All that excitement of the potlucks and the new people and just all the fire and stuff's going on. But I'm going to tell you what, it would hurt them to know that that fire died because they pulled out of the parking lot. It would hurt them that that excitement came to an end because they left, because the excitement's in that building. The joy and the happiness is in what's being done, not what's been done, what's going to happen. See, knowing that the job is going to continually go on, knowing that we're going to have to keep enduring, that's that choice. We can either say, look at the exciting things going to happen, that when the build is done, the arena is done, and the roping's going to be there. May the 20th, we're going to dedicate the church that Sunday. We're having a little buckaroos rodeo. We're having a mutton busting stick horse in our arena. It'll be up by then. Right, Jerry and Larry? Larry and Jerry? Yeah. It'll be there. Look forward to the joy. You want to run this race in the hard time? Look forward to what's going to happen on that day. Look forward to what's going to happen the next day. Look forward to the things that are going to happen. We got to focus on the winner. We got to focus on Jesus. Because you know what? That church is for us. But it ain't about us. 
It's a place for us, but it's about Him. It's for us to gather and worship Him. It's for us to come together and lean on one another and draw strength from one another. It's for us, but it ain't about us. And I tell you what, in America today, that's probably the wrong way to look at it. In America today, everything's supposed to be about me. But it ain't about us. It's about that young man that's going to come and ride a sheep on May 20th that we have never even known before, whose mom and dad's going to be there. And it's going to show up the following Sunday. And then three Sundays later, they're going to show up. And six months later, that dad's going to get baptized in a baptism. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. That's why the building's being built. It's for us, but it ain't about us. The last thing I want to say is that we find out in here that we're going to finish, but it ain't finishing that's the point. It's how we finish. You know, we can finish this up and just get it done. I tell the guys at work all the time, just getting it done doesn't do it. You can say, hey, you know, we got 40 parts done today. But if they weren't done with quality, if they're not built up to snuff, if they didn't build them right, they could have got 100 done. And it didn't matter because it's going to do more damage than it would ever do if they'd have built 20 of them right. It's how you finish. It's easy to get caught up. And Jesus said, who for the point of joy before him endured the cross, despising the shame that is now set down. Jesus said, you know what? The last four years of my life are going to be hell. I got 12 guys that I'm going to take out here. I'm going to bring them together. In three years, I'm going to teach them to be disciples. I'm going to spread God's message. I'm going to be chased, hunted, spit upon. They're going to try to kill me. But I'm going to finish well. Jesus didn't just go through the motions. He run it and endured it and ran the race to the end. With joy, he finished it on the cross. It's how you finish that's important. You know, I tell you what, because we all had a pretty bad start. I don't know about y'all, but mine was pretty rough. If it was how we started, that mattered. But it's how you finish. You ever seen sports players and guys that, you know, talk dirty and, and you know, they win the World Series or, or they've, they've won a national title and, and they just have an arrogance about them and all. Have you ever had a, a team that was really good, that won a lot, that you just couldn't stand because of the way they were and how they handled it? You ever had a team that wasn't really that good, but they were just a great team to be around? They were just a great bunch of guys to be with, great bunch of people to travel with, great bunch of people to see. They finished well, and they're remembered well. How we finish is going to be important. We got a great start. And as far as this building program's coming together, it's starting to wind down. But these next couple weeks, how we finish is going to be the important thing. Because all that work that they've done and everything that's been done, if it doesn't edify and build up one another and, and, and brings glory and honor to Christ, we didn't finish a thing. We should have never started. And folks, I got great hopes and joys for this building. I run this race with endurance. I have great joy in knowing that what's ahead. Do I know there's going to be tough times? And, 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 and folks, understand, every one of us has feelings. Every one of us are going to get irritated. Every one of us is going to be agitated. Someone does something, go to them. Tell them, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be that. 
The Bible says in Matthew 18, if you have something against your brother, you go to your brother. You don't go to the man sitting beside you. You don't call your neighbor on the phone. You don't start gossiping and tearing down. You run the race with joy. You endure. Don't get caught in the stare of sin. Lift up and edify. Build up. What an opportunity we have. The world says that building out there is impossible for the hundred people that's sitting in here. You talk to any contractor, I'll never forget the banker's face when I told him that we were going to build a building for $30 a square foot, and he looked me in the eye and said, Preacher, it's impossible. You don't understand. This is what I do for a living. I finance buildings. I know what contractors charge. I know that you can't do it. And I told him, you're absolutely right, I can't. But I serve a mighty God who can. And he's proved it. And I can't wait to the day when that note is done and we made our last payment and we go in there as elders to go in and sit down in his office and sign on everything. And I can look across that desk and go, told you. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to have to tell him you're absolutely right. Right, brother, we didn't do it for $30 a square foot. We did it for 25 but we didn't do it. God did it. There's already 35 or 40 loads of dirt for a parking lot that we hadn't even planned on. We hadn't even planned on financing. We didn't even know where the money was going to come from. We didn't know where the dirt was going to come from. Starting the works. They're going to start delivering it next week. Run this race with joy. Be happy with what's going on. Satan is going to want to attack us and tear us down and just look him in the eye and say, what did Jesus tell Peter when he started talking that nonsense? Get behind me, Satan. You got no business here. Go on. Devil starts coming to you and tries to ensnare you. Just look him in the eye and say, get behind me, Satan, because you got no business here. Because I'm going to run this race, and I'm going to endure, and I'm going to do it with joy. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. Father, we just lift up everything we are, and I am so excited about what you're doing. Lord, let us just keep the excitement that is in here. Let us a year from now in that new building be so excited about what you've done in that past year and look forward to the year to come. Let us never be disappointed. Let us never, ever get focused. We're on the verge of victory in Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, and if there's someone here that doesn't know that victory, if there's someone here today that come in and said, wow, there's, there, there's a Savior that took a beating, took a whooping for me and went to the cross and died for me, that I may have this joy and this peace, that I'm on the verge of victory and all i got to do is ask for it. I pray today, Lord, that they wouldn't leave this building without asking. That they would follow me in this prayer and say, Jesus, I need you. I need that victory. Lord, I ask you to come in to my life. And I surrender me unto you. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you went to the cross and that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose on the third day. In two weeks, we're going to celebrate that. Your resurrection that defeated death, that I may never die. Father, I ask you now, I want to claim that victory in my life. I surrender all that I'm not under the greatness that you are. And I ask it in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. If you said that prayer, please uh, fill out a green sheet back there. We don't want to hound you. We just want to rejoice with you. We want to help get you started on your road to, to having a full relationship with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You all have a great Sunday afternoon. Uh, be praying for our kids that are getting ready to go. They're going to a, a, a concert tonight called Winter Jam. They're going to be driving to Dallas and coming back. Let's be praying for them that God watches over them and that God will do a mighty work in that arena tonight. God bless you all. Adios.